All right, before we all start singing, I thought I'd introduce you to some friends up here. Okay? So, we have breads from different places of the world. We have, uh, we have from Asia, or Jerusalem, bagels. North America, California, we have uh, gold, uh, the gold miner sourdough. South America, from Peru, whole wheat. Uh, eat mostly in rural areas. <clears throat> you want to do the rest, Donna? <clears throat> okay. Uh, Antarctica. Uh, Queen Maud Land. Shedding biscuits. Eaten with hoosh. So I got to tell you what hoosh is. Too bad. Hoosh is a word for stew made with um, permican. Sh uh, sledding biscuits are one of the two foods that Antarctica exploration was built on. The other is permican. I don't know what that is. They are still used today, eaten by people who, working away from a base in Antarctica as a dietary staple. And uh, pemmican is made of cut pieces of game, elk, bison, moose, and deer, which do not live in Antarctica, by the way, into thin strips and dried into jerky over a fire. And once dried, it's pounded with a stone until it becomes powder. The powder jerky is mixed with liquid fat, optionally added, uh, adding uh, dried berries for flavor and nutrition, and it's packed tightly into bags made of animal hide for use during hunting or traveling. And uh, we have from Europe, uh, France, we've got some French bread, and Australia, we have New South Wales Federation biscuits. Well, that's what they call cookies. So you have to watch out. And what else? Oh, and uh, Ulrich made challah. Uh, up here. I think that about covers it. Okay. Hala is bread. Oh, it's it's Jewish bread. It's it's from the Middle East. Okay. Now now we can do the uh
Well, God is full of wonders. Good morning. And welcome. You're at Pilgrim Congregational United Church of Christ here in Lansing, Michigan. This is October 6th of 2024. This is World Communion Sunday. Christians all over the world today are demonstrating their unity in Christ by celebrating communion or the Lord's Supper in their own tradition. In our worship of God and in our remembrance and gratitude of Christ's sacrifice, we are joined with two billion other followers of Jesus around the world. In today's gospel lesson, people are bringing children to Jesus for him to bless them. And the disciples try to stop them, but Jesus tells them that the kingdom of God is made of such as these, and that we cannot enter the kingdom of God unless we receive it as a child. And then the book of Hebrews says that through Jesus Christ, we are saved by God's grace. So may God inspire us and inform us this day. Amen. And now we have some announcements for Pilgrim on this Sunday, October the 6th. You are all welcome to our fellowship time in the parish hall after the worship service. This is World Communion Sunday. We offer communion to anyone who wishes to receive it. This Sunday is also designated for our annual Neighbors in Need special offering. Judy Hackett will tell us about that and the crop walk in a moment. This is also the first Sunday of the month and we remind you of our discretionary fund which helps our members and people in the neighborhood in times of need. There are envelopes in the pew racks and an offering plate in the back. This afternoon, a group of us is going to the MSU Abrams Planetarium for a presentation on auroras and the night sky. The cost is $5.50. We will meet at the church at 315 and drive over to Abrams Planetarium. We've all heard about the devastation of Hurricane Helene. If you want to help support the relief effort, our denomination, the United Church of Christ, has the National Ministries, which helps communities recover from disaster even when their plight fades from the headlines. To financial support recovery efforts, please write a check to Pilgrim Congregational UCC Church with Hurricane Helene in the memo line. When we collect a significant amount of donations, then Jay will write a check from Pilgrim to the denominational office. The UCC also passes on hygiene and cleanup buckets which congregations can assemble or give donations. Once again, Pat McQueen has provided us with voter guides for the upcoming elections from the League of Women Voters, which is a nonpartisan group. One is on statewide candidates and the other is on tri-county candidates. The guides are in the hallway and in the church office for you to pick up, they are free. Once again, the executive ministry team is grateful to those of you who continue to give your financial support to Pilgrim Church. Your contributions makes the ministry of Pilgrim Church possible. Thank you. And now the team leader for our justice, peace, and mission team, Judy Hackett, will talk about a couple of our special offerings. Judy. Let us see how well I stumble through this Sunday. In October, we have the Neighbors in Need offering. That's a special offering through the UCC. The uh, Bible verse that they used was Isaiah 42.4. God will not falter or lose heart until justice prevails throughout the earth. This year, their theme is mental health. And as we all know, mental health has been an important issue for the last several years and I think more prevalent more recently. Mental health is a universal human right. It provides us with the, of, uh, an opportunity to rekindle our efforts to build a more just world for all dismantling the shame and stigma of mental health challenges. So 25% of our neighbors in need offering goes to the um, CAM, our Indian, um, American Indian neighbors in the UCC, with one third of the offering. So 
you'll find it in the envelopes in the pews, and you will also find uh, the envelopes out on the table. The other item that comes up in October, uh, it's always the second Sunday of October, is the Greater Lansing Crop Hunger Walk. With our economic situation, the way it has been the last several years, especially with the, the uh, pandemic and different things, many of our neighbors find hunger to be an issue, food prices and just how we stretch our money. So the crop walk will happen. It's hopefully the weather's nice. It'll be next Sunday. And it, they do it for nutritious food, clean water, and safe homes. On Sunday, October 13, we walk for our 48th year to fight against the challenges of disease, disaster, displacement, and other concerns that leave people hungry. Join with us as we raise funds to help neighbors near and far get the meals they need today, need today and substantial food security for tomorrow. 25% of the crop offering stays here locally and funds several agencies that help with hunger. Thank you for those of you that are able to participate in both of these and in, in the hurricane effort. Um, seems like we each month we have a different concern. Thank you, Judy. That's the news from Pilgrim for now, and let us pass the peace of God to one another. Peace be with you. Peace. 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 Please be seated and let us pray. We come once again, dear God, to seek your presence and give you our thanks. All around the world, people are gathering to share the most sacred ritual you have given us. In communion, we are connected to you and to all who sincerely seek your presence and to do your will. We remember the gift of love and grace you gave us in the sacrificial death of Christ. In our sharing of communion, we are made one in Christ. Bless us with your presence. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We sing a song of praise for our God. Let all the earth rejoice. God is our light in the darkness. God is the beginning and end of all things. God is great. We declare how great is our God.
Please join with me in the call to worship. Come and gather at Christ's table along with millions of others around the world today. We commune together in the joy of knowing Jesus and sharing his love with each other. We will look to the interests and well being of others, taking Jesus as our example. We will seek to be of the same mind as Christ Jesus who humbled himself by taking the form of a servant. Knowing peace at Christ's table, we are called to go out and bring hope to the world. From this table, we will receive grace and go out to witness to God's gift of love. Jesus said that the greatest among us is the servant of all. As we journey through life, we are meant to help each other. We will offer our hand to those in need and ask sincerely, won't you let me be your servant? May those who are able please stand and sing our opening song, verses 1 through 5. standing and let us pray the unison prayer together as printed in the bulletin. How right, right it, it is, is to praise, to praise you, you, gracious God. God. In, in the, the beginning, beginning when you, you made the world, world you, you also made us neighbors, neighbors one people in many kinds. kinds. You, you created, created us in love, 
and made us to be helpers and friends of each other. You entrusted to us your justice, mercy, and joy. But we have not loved our neighbor or cared for one another as you asked us to do. But even so, you did not reject us. You gave us the way to be reconciled with you and each other. By your Spirit, move us to be just and compassionate. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. The book of Hebrews was written to convince Hebrew people that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ. The author uses the Hebrew scriptures to persuade the reader that Jesus was all a part of God's plan of salvation. In today's passage, the author talks about how God created human beings to be less than the angels for now, and that Jesus is above the angels as God's son and not a creation of God. When people accept the grace of God by believing that Jesus died for them, then people will not die, but we raised above the angels to be with Jesus. Keep this in mind as we read Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and chapter 2, verses 5 through 12. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming of the world about which we are speaking to angels. But someone has testified somewhere, what are human that you are mindful of them or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels. Now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. This is our first scripture reading for today. Today, we celebrate communion with bread and grape juice, representing Christ's body and blood. He gave his life to save ours, so Christ is the bread of life for us. Christ says, I am the bread of life. to me 
There is an offering plate in the back of the sanctuary. Let us now dedicate the offerings we will give to God. As long ago you spoke through the prophets, speak now through us and through the fruits of our labor which we share. We dedicate to your service all the goods we have received from your hand. May we proclaim your name to our brothers and sisters in this congregation. May our gifts carry the good news throughout the community, making a difference in the quality of life experienced by many near and far. Amen. Now, before we give to God, God gives to us in communion. All are welcome to participate. We at Pilgrim Church believe that God's grace is for everyone. Communion connects us with God and other believers in a symbolic heavenly meal. Through this meal, we are reminded of Christ's sacrifice for us and that we are all connected in the Spirit of God. Through this sacrament, God imparts grace to us. May you all be blessed in the sharing of this meal. We remember that Jesus became known through the breaking of the bread to his disciples. And we now join in fellowship with God and believers of every age and place as we recall the Savior's last meal. By sharing this meal together, God binds us all together in love and grace. We remember. Jesus took bread and after giving thanks to God, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup of blessing and gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith, let us pray. Dear God, we remember how Jesus gave himself as a sacrifice, the bread representing his body, the grape juice represents his blood. We ask you to bless this bread and the contents of these cups that we are about to receive. 
we join in fellowship with you and one another in this sacred meal. Amen. For everyone who wishes to take communion, please take a piece of bread, and when, it is, uh, when it's passed to you and when you are ready, take and eat the bread on your own. This symbolizes your individual relationship with God. And then when the grape juice is passed, please take a cup and hold on to it. And when I see everyone has one, we will all drink together. This symbolizes our communal relationship with God and each other. And remember that the bread represents the body of our Lord Jesus. His body was broken to make us whole. So take and eat. Remember, the cup represents the blood of our Lord Jesus, 
He gave his life so that we would have new life and eternal life. Take and drink in remembrance of him. Let us give thanks for the love of God. Please join in the prayer of thanksgiving. God of new life, with joy we have received this sacrament, giving you thanks for Jesus Christ, our peace and our hope. O bright morning star of this darkened world, unite your church throughout the world in continuing Christ's ministry of love and servanthood, that your name may be praised in all the earth. Please claim us as your own. We dedicate ourselves to serving you and each other. Through your spirit, strengthen us to be faithful to your calling every day. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Now we turn to the gospel for today. To understand this passage, we must realize that in the time and society of Jesus, children were treated almost as slaves. The only worth of a child was to serve the needs and the desires of the child's parents and other adult relatives. Jesus was a rabbi, and a rabbi was considered too important to waste time on children. So what Jesus does is turn the order of society on its head. This is shocking. This is radical. This is the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. People were bringing to him, bringing children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Surely I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And then he took them up in his arms and laid his hands on them and blessed them. This is the gospel lesson for today. Let us, <clears throat> let us pray. Thank, thank you, God, for the scriptures. Enlighten us now about your will as we contemplate what we have heard and read. Inspire us to greater devotion and service. Amen. <clears throat> well, in the gospel lesson, the disciples are busy shooing away parents who are approaching Jesus to have him bless their children. And as we have already mentioned in the service, in the time of Jesus, children were seen as little better than slaves. The worth of, a, of children was in how well they served their parents and the adult relatives. Children were looked upon as an extra hand around the farm or a servant helper in the house and a person's social security and Medicare in old, old age. What was expected most from children? Obedience. They were to obey their parents and other adult relatives just as a slave would obey. Children were to do what they were told efficiently and without protest. That was how they were to fulfill the fifth commandment, honor your father and your mother. To honor your parents meant to do what you are told without any back talk. The expectation was children were to be seen and not heard. And maybe some of you have had that experience in growing up. Well, many children then and now got treated harshly, but many parents loved their children and wanted them to live happy lives. And this may be the motivation for those parents who wanted Jesus to bless their children. Of course, the parents probably wanted Jesus to bless their children to be obedient and to hard, hard working without complaining. So the parents 
brought their children to the rabbi Jesus for a blessing. The disciples see this and run interference, telling the parents to go away, leave the rabbi, the rabbi alone. Rabbis, you know, were seen as too important to be bothered with women and children. So the disciples thought that they were doing what they were supposed to do. But Jesus is indignant. He scolds his disciples for turning away the children. Jesus tells them, let the children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Yeah, that's an awkward sentence. The disciples are shocked by this pronouncement. Jesus has just turned the social order upside down. He has just put children at the top of importance in the kingdom of God. Children are important. They belong in the kingdom of God. Well, Jesus is not done saying something shocking. He says, truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. Forget about social convention. Phew. The scripture does not say, but we can imagine that the disciples were dumbfounded and they were thoroughly confused. Jesus has just flipped a theological understanding on its head. And while the disciples and the other adults are shrugging their shoulders, Jesus takes the children up in his arms. He lays his hands on them in blessing. Now the question remains even today. What did Jesus mean that a person had to become as a little child to enter the kingdom of God? Did Jesus mean that we adults are supposed to become trusting like a child or obedient like a child or playful or unpretentious or open-minded to the world and other people? And while we are questioning it, did Jesus mean that children belong in the kingdom of God or that the kingdom of God belongs to children? Well, while we puzzle over what Jesus meant, it seems very clear that his words and actions, that children are important and deserve some kind of respect. Many people trying to interpret what Jesus meant make a distinction between being childish and being childlike. Jesus does not want us to be childish in the sense of being selfish, such as wanting our own way without concern for anyone else being argumentative and quarrelsome, being petty, shirking responsibilities or being exclusive, shutting people out of our circle or community. Being selfish expresses itself in immaturity, narcissism, poor impulse control, emotional outbursts, name calling, demanding attention in inappropriate ways like lying and telling false tales, being a bully, a person who is childish throws tantrums over minor inconveniences and perceives slights. These are childish attitudes and behaviors which do not belong in the kingdom of God. Some people might see a person expressing these childish attitudes and behaviors and consider that person a strong and tough person. This is a person who never forgets an insult or slight, and no matter how small, and always seeks to get back at the offending person. It's called spite. A childish person never apologizes, always doubles down on what he has said and done. A childish person likes to confuse people and create chaos to take advantage of others. That is not a person who belongs in the kingdom of God nor should we admire anyone if we hope to belong to the kingdom of God. Instead, Jesus wants us to be childlike. I know that some people do not make a distinction between those two, but here we are saying that childish and childlike are different. Some childlike attitudes and behaviors are an openness to know the world and other people, having curiosity, being inclusive of others, 
having enthusiasm, expressing awe and wonder at the world, using imagination, being creative, being able to enjoy playing simple games, having innocence or purity of heart, being trustful and guileless and honest. These are qualities of a person who is a part of the kingdom of God. And the kingdom must be received with humility, honesty, and openness to God. Now, the way the world works, business, politics, trade, military, is basically childish at its roots. There are people who would consider that an insult because they consider themselves to be mature, sophisticated, and intelligent. They consider themselves well-behaved, polished in a manner and expression, and above childish ways. But underneath the veneer of civilization, of that veneer of social etiquette and customs are people who are motivated by childish attitudes. Most people are motivated by what is good for themselves to the neglect of what others need. They never truly grow out of the stage of human development of seeing the world as an extension of themselves. And the way the world works is self-interest and self-advancement. They become smarter and learn how to manipulate the environment and other people. They became more disciplined in outward appearance, but their essential nature has not really changed. Our businesses and politics is based on the assumption that people are selfish and only do things for self-preservation or self-advancement. Even when someone does something for another person, seemingly an altruistic act, it is assumed that there is a selfish motivation behind it. An example person does something seemingly for the pure altruistic motivation of helping another person for the well-being of that other person. And the altruistic person gains nothing from helping someone or even loses something like money, time, and energy in doing so. Well, to a worldly person seeing this, well, they are going to keep asking, well, what's, what's the angle? Where's the payback? People just don't give to someone else without getting something out of it. Worldly people see selfishness as the only motivation of a person. They cannot imagine helping someone just to help them. And if they are a believer, then they are selfishly seeking to get points for heaven by helping someone else. You know, hey, if you just wash enough dishes in the kitchen in the church, well, then you're going to get points for heaven. Yeah, brownie points. Now, it's as if heaven is some green stamp prize won by doing good deeds. They fail to understand that heaven is not bought with good deeds, but is a gift of God's grace. They do not know what grace is, especially they don't understand what God's grace is. And the person in the kingdom of God sees the other person as a part of themselves. The person in the kingdom of God trusts that God has acted with grace toward him or her altruistically, and therefore the person acts towards others as God has acted toward him or her with grace. What can we give God that God does not already have or could have easily? Many people, including well-known and respected theologians, believe that we human beings exist to give God glory and praise, as if God is some narcissistic megalomaniac. God doesn't need our glory and praise. God does not need people or creation. God is complete to God's self. There is no lack in God. God did not create people out of necessity or loneliness. God created people to share God's love and to have a relationship with beings made in God's image. You should know that people project onto God qualities and characteristics of their own qualities and characteristics. It's amazing how many people believe that God hates the same people that they hate. 
You know, racists believe that God is a racist. Homophobic people believe that God hates homosexuals. They never realize that they are actually putting themselves in God's place and worshiping themselves. So why are there people who believe that God is a narcissistic megalomaniac? Well, because that's how they would act if they had the power of God. If they had the power of God, they would create people as a cheering section, a yes people who are always flattering God. In other words, always giving God glory and praise to boost God's ego. We have many celebrities and politicians who act like that. They always have to be flattered as being the best of everything, and they cannot stand being criticized. The only God these people worship is to serve themselves. They're not a part of the kingdom of God. They don't promote it. Okay. You are probably asking then, if God does not need people's glory and praise, should people give God glory and praise? Yes, we should. We give God glory and praise for our benefit and well-being. To give God glory and praise is good for us. One of the most important benefits of doing this is for us to remember that God is God and we are not God. We need to remember that we are the creature, not the creator. So we should always give God glory and praise and remind us of our proper place in the universe. We need humbleness to belong to the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God is where God's will is done. God does not relate to people with power, but rather by persuasion. We belong to God's kingdom by respecting other people and to consider their needs as equal to our own. We belong to the kingdom when we show love. God's way is the way of love. You know, love your neighbor as yourself. Love cares. Love shares. Love includes. Love is altruistic, not selfish. Love does not want power over others, but rather love wants to care about others, to have power for them, so that all people will be safe, well-fed, clothed, healthy, and have the possibility of happiness. That is what the kingdom of God is about. World Communion Sunday is not just about communion, but rather it is to remind us of our common humanity and that the kingdom of God is meant for all of us. It is to remind us that we are brothers and sisters of all the people of the world, and we should care for each other and help each other to be safe, well-fed, clothed, healthy, and happy. Jesus did not give his life, did not just give his life for us, he gave it to everyone. In order to belong to the kingdom of God, we need to be less childish and more childlike. Let's see how we do with that. Time to pray. Dear God, awaken our vision and our understanding to be more like yours. Help us to overcome our prejudices and preconceived ideas to embrace the way of your kingdom. Help us to question popular opinion and tradition. Remind us that the most profound wisdom can come from unexpected sources. Open our hearts and minds to be able to see new possibilities for peace and justice for all people. Let the love of our neighbor overcome our differences and unite us in the common cause of being fair and just to all. May those who speak hate from a political or social point of view be transformed by love to seek the common good. And help all of us to be concerned for those who suffer and for those who work to alleviate suffering. We ask especially, God, for you to alleviate the suffering of those who are sick or injured or grieving. 
Help those who are suffering from fires, floods, and other natural and human-made disasters. We pray for healing and comfort to be given to these people. Give them peace of mind, renewal of body, and strength of spirit. Please protect all who seek to promote people's health. Let us do all we can to help others to stay healthy and safe. Thank you, God, for your grace, which offers us your love and forgiveness. Help us to be more loving. With gratitude in our hearts, we come to you in unity of spirit and desire as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today we have celebrated communion with people from all over the world. It is time for us to remember the grace of God given to us in the sacrifice of Christ. May this open us to the awareness of the beauty in the world and give thanks for all things bright and beautiful. May those who are able please stand and sing verses 1, 2, and 3. <clears throat> Bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all these wise and wonderful, our dear God made them all. Each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings. divine insight, spoken to us of divine inspiration, touched our hearts with love, and may God open our hearts and open our minds to the possibilities of good in the world. May we see creation a bit more like God sees it, 
And may we be changed for the good by any new insight we have. May God give us courage, strength, and determination to be faithful to God's will. May God bless and keep you now and always. Amen. Bind us together, Lord. We will be singing the chorus of Bind Us Together. Go in peace.